welcome back. Today we are doing a thrift flip challenge. I'm collabing with my friend and fellow YouTuber, Brooke. So each of us is going to the thrift store to shop for the other person. We're gonna send those items off to them. And at the end of this, we're going to show each other what we did with them. But before we get into the DIYs, we obviously have to thrift. So let's go thrifting for Brooke. I got a few items for Brooke. So the items that I picked up, I feel like have a lot of potential, but still have a little wiggle room as far as imagination goes. But let's quickly run through the things that I'm sending off. Okay, so first up is the storage box. It's actually a wall hanging piece, which I thought was really cool. I actually ended up buying the one that had two drawers, but I decided to give this one to Brooke. Next up is a vintage cutting board. I really love the shape of it. It was very boxy and square, but at the same time, I thought it had so much potential and so many ideas come to mind when it comes to cutting boards. And last but not least is this jug. Now color wise, it might not be a fan favorite, but I thought this had good bones. So I'm excited to see the transformation, but now it's time to ship them off. So my package has been sent. It's probably on its way if it's not already there. However, I just got my package. I was gonna open it up on camera, but got a little too excited, so sorry about that. So let's quickly run through the things that I got that I have to revamp. So first up are these wood pieces. I love the color, it had a great shape, and a lot of ideas were coming to me when I first saw these. Next up is the small box tray. It appeared to be a former DIY, and I absolutely adore trays, so I was hoping something would come to me. Next up is this faux book that is actually a storage box. First impressions though was that I really liked the pattern. Speaking of patterns, this fabric had a beautiful one. It was very subtle and refined. I don't work with fabric too often, so this will be an interesting change for me. And last but not least is this wreath. As soon as I saw this one, I knew this one would be a challenging one for me. I lack the creativity. Also, I'm not very good at repurposing wreaths. And this is not part of the challenge, but for the purpose of this video, for better or worse, I'm going to be using only items that I have. This is one to stop me from spending more money that I don't need to spend, and two, to dwindle down the supplies that I already have on hand. I might regret this later, but we're gonna try it out. So these wood things, not 100% sure what they are. Maybe a trivet, I'm not sure. Anyways, we're gonna start with that one because I already know what I wanna do with this one. But for these wood pieces, I'm thinking about making them stands. So I'm taking this wood dowel and I decided I'm going to cut it down to make three legs for each of the wood pieces. So using my chop saw, I'm cutting them down. I originally wanted to bring them to three inches. I brought that down a little bit shorter though. I believe two and a half inches for one and then one and a half inches and I wanted to have have them different heights so I made sure that the legs were shorter on the smaller piece. And assembly was pretty quick. All I did was use my hot glue gun to secure the legs onto the wood pieces. The glue did have a little difficulty adhering to the cork, so I decided to move them out of place of the cork, or at least not fully on top of the cork, to make sure that they actually stay down. Last but not least was some spray paint. I decided to go for black, and this was the last of my black spray paint, but still really happy I used the last of this can on this piece. Nope, got nothing. 
Okay, also I'm not sure what to do with the book yet, um, but I'm gonna start with spray paint and try to work it out. So obviously painter's tape would have been ideal. However, I just used the tape I had on hand and so I'm using this masking tape. It actually held up pretty well though. But as you can see, I'm using the tape to cover the parts that I don't wanna spray paint because I will be spray painting the top after much debate with myself on whether or not to keep the pattern. And after making sure it is covered in all the areas, I decided to grab my spray paint. Now I decided to choose a cream color and I had full intention to really dress this up. However, I'm gonna be honest and say that I put it aside and completely forgot about it. My mind had been preoccupied with the wreath that I totally forgot that I didn't even finish this project. No, not today, Reese. I'm not dealing with you today. This tray. What to do with the tray? <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was at this point where I decided I wasn't going to use the wreath in its entirety. I was going to use parts of it, mainly this part of it. This birdhouse was clearly not in agreement with a plan because it was a struggle to take out. And the wood dowels sticking out of the birdhouses were difficult to remove as well. So I decided to use the chop saw to cut them off completely. And to make sure they would sit flat, I sanded the bottoms before moving on to my next step. And this idea was completely out of left field for me, but I decided to use the birdhouses in conjunction with the tray in order to make something. So at this point, I had already decided on my idea. What I didn't decide on yet was how I was going to place this together. I just didn't know what I liked, what was gonna work. And so eventually I landed on something and basically it was the same thing I had originally, but off to the side. But finally, with the design in mind, I was ready to glue down the pieces to the top. So my idea for this though, was to combine these two items in order to make a key holder. I really wanted to get away from actually just making a prettier tray and doing something a little bit different. So I decided to combine these two things and the birdhouses reminded me of houses and somehow that thought led me to thinking about house keys. And to get rid of the pastel colors, I decided to again, spray paint it a cream color. And not surprising, but this took two full coats for me to cover the color but finally the pink and blue was gone now to actually hang the keys I'm using these lightweight C hooks now these C hooks did have a point at the end but it was a little blunt however I was lucky in the sense that the bottom of the tray was actually really thin wood so although it did take a while to get them through I just had a push and turn a little bit harder than usual And last minute, to add a little bit color, I decided to just glue on a few leaves just to kind of give it a little bit more of a variation. But at this point, I was really happy because even if I can't think of anything for the wreath, I still did a DIY with it. Okay, next up is the fabric. I knew exactly what I wanted to do with this because I actually needed fabric for another piece. So I'm going to be taking this cork board and covering the cork board with the fabric. So I decided to combine this fabric with a previous thrift find of mine. So I started off by unfolding the fabric and laying it down flat with the pattern face side down. This was to make sure that I didn't have residual ink on the good side of the fabric. But using a pen, because that's all I could find, I started to trace out inside the frame to make sure that the fabric would fit snugly inside. The first time around, I cut the fabric too small. So this time around, I wanted to make sure that I made the fabric big enough so it could cover the whole thing. So I ended up using a fabric cutter for this, but I do realize now the way I was cutting it and what I was cutting it on top of was probably the reason I was struggling so much. But once I had my oval shape, it was time to cover the cork board. So using a hot glue gun, I lined the rim and then slowly placed the fabric on top of that. I used a pen to help me hold it down because it was thin fabric and the glue gun gets pretty hot. And as I continued to glue down the fabric, I had to make sure that I pulled it as tightly as I could in order to minimize the lines and wrinkles that would come through. And once it was glued down, I still had excess fabric to worry about. So again, I went in with the fabric cutter to try to cut the rest of it off. But I still didn't like the unfinished edge look, so I decided to use some macrame cord and wrap it around the inner frame. I wrapped it around as many times as I could before it reached the outer edge. And honestly, that last step made a world of a difference.
So in the spirit of not being wasteful, I decided to give it a go with the wreath. The first step for me though, was to take off all the other appliques on it. Now I must have shown a million different expressions in this time frame because honestly, I was struggling so much to take the items off. I don't know what kind of glue this was, but honestly, any stronger and I would have needed a crowbar to take it off. And with the last piece finally removed, I sat there, pondered my decision for a little bit, and then went on with it. So while looking through my craft drawer, I noticed this greenery piece. I never used the branches for anything. I just didn't really like the way it looked in a vase. However, on a reef, I might be onto something. So I couldn't find my wire cutters. So instead I scored the stem with my scissors and bent it back and forth until it was easy enough to break. Now to mold the stem to the wreath itself, I decided to snake the bottom of the stem in between the twine. And after securing the entire piece to the wreath, I decided to glue down particular parts of the stem in order to mold it the way that I wanted it to look. This took a little bit of effort to make it look exactly the way I wanted it to, but once I was done with that, I moved on to the flowers. I only chose two and I only chose the one stem because I wanted to make it sparse and a little sporadic, much different than the original look. So all in all, I was happy with the way it turned out. Yay! Yay! Do you want to go first? Um, sure. Do you want me to go first? Sure, I'll go first. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's see. Go okay, so I'm going to start off with the ones that I felt like was the easiest for me to do. Um, okay. And I actually already had them styled on these shelves because I loved them so much. Uh, but those... Oh, yeah, I got them. <laughs> but the wooden, uh, wooden things that I don't remember what they're called, but I made them into stands, and so I thought that would be perfect That's to... Amazing. on the wreath. I wasn't actually going to use the wreath at all, but uh, last minute I just kind of looked through my um, greenery stash and everything like that and I just made a simple wreath like this. Yay! So uh, I took the birdhouses off of the wreath I put them on this stand, and so this is basically a little wall shelf where you hang your keys. That is incredible. <laughs> oh my gosh. You, like, you completely transformed the <laughs> I love that. So the book. I really love the pattern on it so much. I was contemplating whether or not to like at least keep one, but it wasn't centered. So I was like, oh man. So I first just, you know, made it neutral and everything like that and decided to do a stencil of my own on the front of it. was also the fabric, which honestly, I have to thank you for the fabric. The fabric was something that I needed anyways. I actually combined it with one of my previous thrift finds and I decided to make like a pin board. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that you got good use out of it. This was a treat. I've always wanted to collab with someone. Thank you so much. For thank this. you. Seriously, thank you. <laughs> I, I appreciate it so much and it's been so much fun. I definitely want to do this again. For sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. well, I hope you have a great rest of your night. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Bye, Brooke. Bye. Brooke. Taking it away, oh my goodness. Taking it away with the things that she did. So if you haven't watched Brooke's video, please jump over and watch it. I mean, my reaction doesn't even do it justice. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to do this. And Brooke, thank you so much for collabing with me. It was such a pleasure. And so I will see you in the next one. Bye.